Well, hey there, YouTube. It's Petey, and I'm, I'm demoing the P amp. So right now I've got the Digitech uh, X series distor DF7 distortion modeler, and it's set up with the metal zone. So this is the MT2. This is the famous uh, worst tone. Uh, can it's a B. Uh, beehive a hornet uh, nest in a coke can tone <laughs> And that um, Behringer Digital Reverb Delay, that $15, I paid $30 for this DF7. And I, honestly, it's got a, a pair of outputs. The one is a modeling output. Um, so it has a speaker, um, speaker sim, a cab sim. And I, I really, I like that. I prefer I prefer that output. Now we're switching over to uh, the Behringer T O eight hundred, and this is a uh, Tube Screamer clone. So we're and that's going to be bypassed. But I'm going to be um, playing these. I think they're El Nico five, uh, like Fleor.
switch it pops when you hit the bright switch tube screamer on. I'm gonna... The tube screamer has a mid hump and having that bright switch on with the tube screamer is a mistake.
it's a it's a nice sounding uh, clean pedal platform amp is what it is <laughs> going to do here is I'll put the neck pick up on the tube screamer on crank the gain turn the volume down um, I'm on the neck pickup and I'm rolling the tone all the way back so this is what what Eric Clapton came up with this um, he called it the woman tone
So there you go. That's the P amp demo. Um, here it is just clean. using the bridge pickup with the tone turned all the way up it's a fairly bright sounding amplifier you still have uh, more to go with that because um, the bright switch is off right now now I'm gonna normally I I turn everything down when I power it off I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna see if it pops so it doesn't didn't let out a pop that time. Um, and if you're curious, I, I, I have this uh, Behringer Digital Reverb. And the power pack is this. Um, it's made by Dynex. And it's a 4300 Ma nickel, uh, nickel metal hydride battery. So... We weren't using a pop, an AC line uh, anywhere in, in this. There is no AC except for on the computer end, which keeps things as quiet as it can be, uh, which is one of the advantages of the hassle you're going to experience having to recharge the batteries. For me, it's not a big deal because I have a, I have a good amount of battery chargers here um, and I, the ones that I purchase, like this is the one that I've been using for the last few years. It has, it has 10 bays. You can put uh, 10 batteries in it. So uh, I, I charge those batteries. Um, I keep the unit upright because there's heating, uh, cooling vents on there. And I like that to function the best that it can uh, with passive cooling so uh, that enables me to keep an eye on the charging indicator leds and um, just i mean it's an auto shut off charger but still i i, I like to uh, i don't like leaving them in there when it's green i pull them out and put some red batteries in there because i've got a good collection of batteries now what we're going to do uh, right now I'm going to grab this amplifier, and I had the uh, master volume at about one-third of the way up. Uh, well, actually, it's on four. And the gain on the tone mender was also set at four. And I had all of the tone controls turned all the way up. But I have the bright switch down. So I'll give you a look at the... Uh, we were only using half. Uh, we could use a dozen batteries. We just you, were running just six. Um, and you can see the battery... The battery pack does have a cable. Where is that? It's over here. Here's the power cable. And... Um, If you, if you find yourself you wanting to plug it into AC, you don't want to use the batteries, you could just as soon remove these batteries, pull, yank that cable out of there, and plug your uh, power supply right in there. Now, a common solution if you were going to build something like this for yourself, and you, you're um, looking for access to find a power supply that would work with this. Well, the real popular ones that you can find in resale are old laptop power supplies. Now they won't be 
24 volt 5 amp or 25 4 volt 10 amp at every place you walk into what you're going to find is 19.5 volts 3.67 amp 4 amp and i got to tell you those are just fine for this you're not you're not going to be turning up the master volume and the gain high enough um, in these type of situations, if for apartment playing or home playing practice amp type thing, that type of power supply. Now, guitar players were, were a little bit strange. Like, I'm always going to want to go for a 24 volt. <laughs> like, I'll pick the, the 2 amp 24 volt power supply uh, over a 19.5, that's 6 amp. <laughs> which is kind of shooting yourself in the foot. But that's just how we think, and uh, I certainly wouldn't discourage anyone from amp building. If you were interested in going down this path and you wanted to try a Class D amp project, I would recommend the Tone Mender as the front end or preamp. Now, keep in mind, you don't need to build the Tone Mender to do this. You can simply... You have the power amp and let your uh, modeling effect your multi effect device you know as we move on people are going to be buying more of this type of stuff so this type of project that goes from the realm of some weird thing that some weird guy in an apartment would want to do to like something that's a feasible you know like they're they're making stuff like this now they're making these amps. Um, all the Vox stuff with the new tube, <laughs> which is, it's, don't get me started on that. But, um, hey, I guess it, it, they, they, get, they, get, they get to charge quite a bit more than the product is worth. If, if it has the word tube in it. And isn't that the reality of it? Because I'm telling you, I did not miss, a t uh, a t I'm not like, oh, I need to warm that up. It sounded so harsh and digital, you know. So you, you can skip the uh, building yourself the circuitry. And there's plenty of other ways to do it. Um, if you're looking to get more of the gain from the amp, there is a project called... Uh, a Thunderbird, a runoff groove Thunderbird. Now the downside of the Thunderbird is that it, it, it eats about an amp of power, but that's one of the best sounding uh, distortion plexi type gain devices. There's another one that's called the M800 or the M80. Paddle, PCB, Paddle PCB sells a PCB called the M800, which is the M80. That's incredible. It's a really great sounding device. You could just as soon build a Marshall Governor. Mind you, that requires a buffer. You have to have a buffer if you have a Governor. Um, so it's pretty much open season for whatever you want to put in your amp to go in front of, in between the input jack and the power amp, including nothing. You can go right in. If you're, if you're confident about your multi-effect and you don't care about any additional EQ, go for it. And I mean, there's, in, there's extra input and output EQ stages on all of this stuff now. So it's kind of redundant, but I gotta tell you, it's really nice to have even though the way I've got it set, I've got everything turned up to 10 with the bright switch off, you know. So it's, in my case, you know, ideally I would be um, running my modeler with the tweeter and then reducing the treble controls. So that's why this makes sense for me. But everybody's needs are different, and if you're just getting started, 
and you want to say, I, I made my own guitar amplifier, well, the Class D is certainly the, the way to, to go, in my opinion. There are uh, other options out there. There's a project called the Tiny Giant that I would recommend. Um, one of the things you have to consider is the amount of current that your power amp is going to consume. And this is where the Class D becomes attractive because it's up to 93% efficient, meaning most of the power you're throwing at your circuit is getting converted directly into audio, not heat. So that's kind of the no-brainer. And projects like the Tiny Giant, they're not, you couldn't run it off batteries because it would, it, the amount of power it gobbles up, it would drain your batteries very quickly. So this whole thing is a trade-off. Building an amplifier like this, you're, number one, you're up against this Class D is, you know, it's I, not ideal. It doesn't distort the way a traditional tube amp distorts. It doesn't have pleasant breakup, so you, you, it has to be a, a clean amp. And going down that road and trying different things, I've come to find, for my tastes, and I do play with a lot of gain. I don't play clean. I, I I have been doing it more as I get older. I've been really getting better with that. But um, what has worked out for me is this formula. I like the tone mender. I really do. I like the tone mender in front of a TPA three one one six D two mono amp board. This is what I really like. And I, uh, as far as my wife goes, we, we have a project in the works. I built two bass amps this year. I built a 10-inch speaker bass amp and a 12-inch. And the 12-inch uh, one gave me some guff. Um, the company that sold me the PCB, they don't really, they're the worst PCB company I've ever dealt with. And I'm, I'm in, forced in a position of rebuilding that circuit uh, because the one I have, one I, the first one, they left out information out of the PDF and I troubleshooted the shit out of it and tore the PCB up. And now it's got an intermittent issue. So th that base uh, idea that is an evolution. It's basically, it comes down to a um, another Behringer product, uh, which is a clone of the Sansamp base DI. So it's a Sansamp base DI serving as the preamp for another class D with a base speaker. And that gives you a distortion control with a blend and then a three band EQ, which is bass, treble, and presence. And I think that's I think that circuit's uh, just a, a really exceptionally uh, smart way to do it. Uh, when you're talking about the bass guitar, I won't really know until I have that one finished. So it's going to be a little bit more time, but I'll be demoing that. So, hey, uh, this amp, you'll probably see it around. I mean, I now I have something I can grab that I don't have to plug in to AC. And I cannot tell you how big of a deal that is. Not having to worry about AC makes up for all the other hassle that you go through. An embarrassment of saying, hey, I built my own amp and it's class D. Because, you know, the D stands for digital, and it, it is a dirty word, and people uh, people will point and laugh. That's what it comes down to. It is what it is, and, and I mean, the Class D thing has enabled us to do so much, make so much music. And so many projects and so much, I've reaped so much that I've always carried the torch for this technology and been the flag bearer, the guy saying, hey, the Class D stuff is awesome. You know, just 
fuse it, put a fuse in there. <laughs> you can do it. It's really not that complicated. It's, it's very simple. So I'm sure no matter what you choose for your Class D AMP project, when you finish it, it will be one of the most rewarding experiences, especially if you've already been through the pedal building routine. Because AMP building, you have more room. Pedal building, you're restricted to this small, you know, and it's it's just not as fun. When you, when you have, like, this project, everything just fit. And it works. There's no intermittent issues. It's rock solid, and it sounds great. I can't tell you how good that feels. So... Thank you for joining me for these this video series of making the amp. Uh, you know, I probably will be doing some more uh, on this topic as it relates to the 12, which is uh, the other project with the 12-inch speaker for my wife. So you can look for more of this type of content as time goes on. And, you know, I'm kind of going to be wrapping this up because... Um, we don't have room. I can't keep building stuff. I, you know, it's like I've got we, what we need here. I've, I've built what we need to do this hobby. And um, when I get finished with these these two here, I don't think I'm going to be building any more amps. So I'll just have to write some more music. <laughs> All right, you guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for joining me on this one. It's been a really fun and super rewarding project. Make sure you try to stay warm, hug your pets, and peace. <laughs>